Hey, today I'm going to talk about AMD versus Intel, specifically with the commercial CPUs. And, uh, yeah, so some advantages I think Intel always has had is brand loyalty, scale of production, and they've always been ahead of AMD in terms of the, uh, the process, the nanometer process, basically how small they can make the trans blah, transistors on the chip. But in many key areas, AMD has been ahead of them technologically. Innovations. So, what do we got here? They've, uh, you know, if you take the Intel Pentium 4, Intel is really, they ran on that processor as far as they could take it. And why not? They're trying to make a profit. It makes sense for them. They want to get the most money as they can out of the development of each chip. But that allowed AMD to really kick their ass. <laughs> Specifically, you know, AMD came out with a dual core CPU before Intel. And then they also came out with 64-bit processor before Intel. And, and if, I think the more most interesting and valuable thing they did is they figured out a way to take the memory controller off the motherboard and then they put it on the CPU. And that was really smart. I really admire that. It allowed a lot of memory bandwidth, faster control memory, you know, all that. And that was pretty cool. Now, you can make the argument that uh, AMD made the first 8-core CPU, but, uh, no, not really. The problem is, is that those cores were kind of anemic, yet they had like two core, two core modules, and each core shared some of the processor resources. So it was really more like eight core and a halves, if that makes sense. So I don't really count the FX8320 in those series of cards, at CPUs, as being eight core CPUs. Especially when Intel had four core CPUs that could kick their ass. So, but Jim Weller, Jim Weller is back with AMD. He's a legend in the, you know, CPU designing industry. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what he, him and his team come up with at AMD. I hope they really push Intel, like, Kind of like they did with the Pentium 4, because Intel's been riding on the i7 now for a while. And the i7 is great, but... I, again, it's the lack of competition for me and D that lets them come out with slightly better versions of i7. Like the 2600K, how much better has it really gotten since then? I, I don't think very much. Now Intel's coming out with an 8-core CPU soon. But it's going to be either six hundred or a thousand dollars, which is a ridiculous amount to spend on a CPU. I mean, you can build a pretty damn good computer with a thousand bucks. But that's another rant. And they always call everything i7, i5, i3. I don't know why every single product has to have i in it. I guess because iTunes did so well, but it's getting annoying. And again, I guess that's a different rant. But Intel always has that advantage of, you know, their nanometer process, how small they can make those transistors. But physics, physics is soon going to slap them in the face, because it's, you can only make those wires so small, you know? I mean, a copper atom is only so, is so thick, you can't make it smaller than that. And they're getting close to that pretty soon. But they're going to 14 nanometer, Intel is going to 14 nanometers soon. I think AMD is going to be at 20. So again, AMD is always a step behind them when it comes to that. But soon, when they hit a wall and they simply just can't make it any smaller, well, then AMD is going to catch up. And ever, any other competitor is going to catch up as well. And it really is going to come down to just who has the best CPU chip design. I'm kind of looking forward to that day. I think that's going to be really interesting. Uh, and heck, that... When that happens, you might even start to see new players in the come out with the uh, x86 chips. Or maybe by then, mobile will just kick everyone's ass. <laughs> but we'll, we'll see. Anyway, so that's all I got. Um, you know, subscribe and all that. 
Actually, just watch more of my videos. <laughs> watch all my videos, and I'll see you later. Thanks, bye.